Congratulations. You've got an interview set up for supply chain management or director's role, and you're going to have a face-to-face -face meeting. You probably have your undergraduate degree, maybe a certification or two, and maybe even your master's degree. Now, if you're thinking of your master's degree, I can highly recommend Georgia College and State University in Milledgeville, Georgia. I've gone through their program and highly recommend it. The purpose of this video is really just for the supply chain people to ask more specific questions in the interview so you have a better understanding of what you're walking into. It could be a very top-notch A-plus company when you ask these questions and you get the right answers, or it could uncover some stones that uh, show that it's maybe not a good fit for you. So I'm going to talk about four things, labor, tools, inventory, and KPIs, and then I'll wrap it up at the end. Now, some of this, I, I do bring up some personal experiences in my 30 years of supply chain experience, and I'm not going to say names of people or names of company, uh, but I just want to give those as, a, as an example of what I've come across. So without further ado, let's talk about labor. First thing I ask is, do you have temp labor and how much? Personally, if they have more than 5 or 10% of their staff being temp labor, that's a red flag to me. Now, I'm not talking seasonal work. I'm talking about a position that is a full-time position uh, that should be a professional full-time person. So if they don't have temps or it's very minimal, okay, that gets us past the first gate. Now let's ask the question, what do you pay your hourly folks? What are you paying the order picker? What are you paying the order processor? How about the four truck operator, the inventory control coordinator? What you as a manager should be doing, go online, go to salary.com and punch up your area and you'll get a median for a four truck operator, whatever it may be. Now here in Clearwater, St. Petersburg, Tampa area, it's about $18 an hour. And a couple companies I've been with, I've spoken to, they're in the $15 or $16 an hour. And I asked the question, how long are you retaining those people? One to two years, and that's about it. And they say yes. It's because they're going on to bigger and better things. If I can get $2 an hour more, that's $4,000 a year, I'm out of here. And you don't want your leads and your supervisors becoming a training ground for these people to get their experience and go on to the next place. So make sure they pay a good wage. And if they do, they'll retain the people. And speaking of retention, ask them, what is your average tenureship for the hourly people? See if they know that answer. I can tell you I worked for a fantastic company in Illinois. I left there after 18 years, and I was the young one. And I was the manager, and there were plenty of managers above me. But my favorite story was an hourly person. Started with the company right out of the Navy. Worked there 52 years. Now, it was not uncommon for people to be there 40 plus years. So that's a sign of a good, solid company. Ask those questions, you might find out some stuff. Okay, so let's talk about tools. First thing is, ask if they have, or what kind of warehouse management system. Do they have barcoding? and what type of ERP system they have. They may have multiple systems because of buyouts or whatever other reasons they have. Now, believe it or not, 30% of the companies have warehouse management systems. That means 70% don't. This is the 21st century. People should have warehouse management systems. And if they don't, that should be a sign to you that maybe they're not keeping up with the times. Now, there's an, there's an interesting term out there in the software industry called technical debt. And the best analogy I can give is just, just think of anything uh, in, in the software. You, you see all these upgrades uh, happening to your devices and what have you, the software industry. For those that aren't keeping up, it's going to cost them much more money to finally catch up into the latest trend. And it's the same thing with the business. If your business is not barcoding, but there are others are that are barcoding and have a warehouse management system, they're going to be further ahead of you. Look at Amazon and Walmart. They spend the money. That's why they're leading the pack and the others are getting left behind. So if they don't have a warehouse management system, that could be okay. But ask them, is there funding for it? And if you're interviewing after August, because that's about the time 
when budgets go out for the next year, that'll tell you right then and there, is that is this in the future for them? I'll tell you an interesting story. I spoke to one company. They wanted some supply chain you know, advice, expertise from me. And I asked this, the same question, how many systems do you have in place? And they said, well, we've got seven different ERP systems across the country. And I said, what's your plan? And they said, well, we want to extract the information and then put it into Power BI or PowerPoint so it's easy reading for charts and pie charts and line charts so that the executives and, and upper level management can understand that. I said, no, 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 that, that's not what I'm asking. What is your plan to get to one system? And they said, well, we're hoping to get there in three or four years. I thought to myself, three or four years is a hope. That's not a plan. A plan should be something within 12, 18 months at the most, unless it's a huge, huge, you know, undertaking. But anyway, keep that stuff in mind. Uh, now let's talk about inventory. Right off the bat, I think it's fair to ask, what is the dollar amount of your inventory and what's the dollar amount of your gross sales? Gross sales, you could probably get that if it's a public traded company. So let's just say it's $100 million in gross sales and they have $7 million in inventory. To me, that's a little high. 7%. Industry standard for average companies, supply chain cost compared to gross sales is 8.5 to 11.5%. Well, if we've got 7% in inventory, we haven't even added our labor, our racking, the building, the lease of the building or upkeep of the building, the material handling equipment. So all those things are added into supply chain costs. And we're going to be at that 10, 11% and soon to be past 11.5% pretty soon. And we'll be at the bottom of the heap. So that's something to look at. It'll give you a gauge. Where are they, you know, with benchmarking across industry standard? So ask him again, is there a plan to bring that inventory down? What are your inventory days of supply? What are your turns per year? 11 to 24 is standard. Now, it depends on the business. You could have something that turns much quicker than that. But do your homework ahead of time and ask those thought-provoking questions to them. Because after all, there's a cost to holding inventory. It's called carrying cost. And let me give an example, you know, for those that don't understand carrying cost. Let's go back to our $100 million company. And we have, let's say, $5 million worth of inventory. Sales and marketing, they want to, they think they've got some sales coming down the pipeline. So they double the inventory up to 10 million. Well, I tell them, I don't have the room. We have to go rent out a public warehouse company. We have to get more labor now. We have to get more material handling equipment. And we have to pay for transportation back and forth. Those are all costs to carry that inventory. And the industry standard is 20%. So there are, there are other industries that have higher uh, value to it, but let's just say 20%. So if you've got $5 million in inventory, it's costing a company $1 million a year to hold it. So obviously we want to, we want to keep the inventory down and we want to get more creative to keep this cost low. And I'll give you a, a, a good example of this. I was with a company and they wanted $150,000 cost reduction from each department. So I went to the plant director and said, this is a slam dunk. Why don't we get rid of the $1.2 million of our inventory that's three plus years old, that's slow moving, obsolete material. And plus, then we can get out of the public warehouse company that we're in because they had a public warehouse company. They were just storing a lot of this extra inventory. That was costing $300,000 a year, plus the material handling equipment, plus the service issues we were suffering, plus transportation, plus the labor. Well, that didn't go well. They didn't want to do it. Now, why didn't they want to do it? I'll give a couple accounting uh, formulas out here that you're not going to do this during the interview, but keep this in mind and, and hit me up. I'll, I'll send you this Excel spreadsheet that I made up. Uh, the first one is debt to equity ratio or you know liabilities to assets, however you want to phrase it. It's kind of like when you and I go to buy a house, we, we can only have so much debt to what we own. So in this case, let's go back to our $100 million company. 
let's say we've got $50 million of liability out there. We owe $50 million. We have $100 million of assets, equity. That's 50%. That's the threshold. That's what investors look at. Okay, that, that, that's not bad. That's on the edge of a company. So if we want to invest in this company, that's fine. So let's go back to my example. If we get all that inventory out of there, our asset, our equity is now lower. So it's not $100 million anymore. It could be $95 million. So instead of 50 divided by 100, it's 50 divided by 95. So now our ratio is 52%. And that does not look good to investors. They would frown upon this. So my point being, when you're getting with inventory and you want to depleted, get with your financial advisor, get with your accountant so that they can bleed this off on a monthly basis to get rid of the obsolete stuff. Otherwise, you're, you're going to wake up in a year or two years down the road and say, oh my gosh, look at all this inventory and look at what we're paying to carry this dead inventory. So you've got to have a program to get rid of it. Uh, the other one is asset turnover. Uh, and that's a percentage of gross sales. So again, if we have $100 million in sales, and we have $80 million in, in assets, assets being the buildings, the equipment, the machinery, all that stuff adds up to 80 million. 100 divided by 80 is 125%, 1.25. Well, what if we go back to our example? What if we had 10 million of inventory and you were able to go in there and knock out 5 million of them? Well, now instead of 100 divided by 80, it's 100 divided by 75. That's 133% asset turnover. That number you want high, and that's good. That's what you can show to the executives further in your career. And the last one is, and this will be every day, they say you shouldn't be an accountant. You don't have to be an accountant. Well, you do need to know the numbers. And let's face it, the bottom line is a business wants to make a profit. And how do we make a profit? We keep our expenses lower. Well, one of those expenses is inventory. It's a variable expense. It moves up and down. So you've got your gross margin or gross profit, I should say. And after that, you've got expenses. Well, if you can take out more of those expenses, then that means your income is going to rise. Your net income is going to go up. And that means your gross profit is going to rise as well. So keep that in mind with, with your inventory. Hopefully, I, I kind of bounced around there. But hopefully, that gives you a couple questions to ask during this interview process, give you a feel for where they are and if they have plans on, on cycling this inventory out. So let's talk about KPIs now. Hopefully they've got KPIs. Believe it or not, I've had a few companies that I've spoken to, they didn't have any in place. Uh, so ask them, what, what is your inventory practice? Do you do cycle counting? Describe your cycle counting process. How accurate is your cycle counting process? What is your bin accuracy, net accuracy, and gross accuracy? Net accuracy, you want to be between 98 and 102%. Gross accuracy, eh, 85%. Uh, bin accuracy, 95%. Ask those numbers. If they don't have answers to that, that, that could be a sign. Um, how about safety? Some companies, they say they mean a lot, of, they talk a lot about safety, but do they really practice? Is it in the goals and objectives of every manager, every employee, every CEO? I worked for a company that that was part of the CEO's goals and responsibilities. And if there was an accident, regardless of the wherever in the country was, he was on a conference call of the accident investigation. Now, it wasn't the investigation, I should say. I should back to, it was a summary of it. But that's how active, and that's how much they cared about safety. What, what is their total case rate? Is it three? Is it four? Below three is good. Um, cases per hour, uh, units per hour. Um, I, I mentioned supply chain cost. Um, there's a website. I highly recommend to people, logisticsbureau.com. I subscribe to their YouTube channel, and every week they give me five, 10-minute videos of stuff in the field. And one of the videos was actually a seminar they did on benchmarking and KPIs. And they gave me, hopefully you can see this on the screen, right about there. Hit me up. I'll send this to you. But it shows what top notches or best in class middle road and needs improvement. And these are good metrics and, and KPIs you can introduce to a company that uh, you're working with or you're going to be working for. But they, that's where they were saying, you know, eight and a half to 11 half percent is supply chain cost of gross sales. Um, 
So hopefully that gives you some some questions to ask. But again, just hit me up with that. And that those formulas, I've got an Excel spreadsheet on that. Hit me up with that. I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, I'm you know I'm on LinkedIn. You can hit me up on LinkedIn as well. Um, so hopefully uh, this is, gives you some idea of some questions to ask that are not the generic ones you hear about organizations that are more specific to the supply chain. Because let's face it, this is a two way street. You need a job, but you want to make sure that you know what you're walking into. Uh, believe it or not, and this is another thing I would say, ask for a tour of each building that you're going to be responsible for. I made that mistake. They didn't give me a tour of the third building, and I knew why. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of close this out. Um, I, I have a saying out there. Whenever something goes wrong in a company, Somehow it's a supply chain that that's the first place people point the finger at what went wrong. Why was my shipment late? Why was it damaged? Where is it? Why did it get delivered wrong? Why is it not ready yet? Where is my inventory? But is that company going to fund the supply chain to correct those service issues? Just ask those questions to yourself. Because everyone needs funding in a business, it's a matter of how much. And at the supply chain, if you're getting a feel that they're not going to give you the resources, the tools to succeed, the people to succeed, and the funding, this could be a red flag for you. And you may have to just decline and move onward. But that's your decision. And I hope these questions help you out. And I, I would be remiss if I did not thank Dr. Manrout at Georgia College and State University. He asked me or actually convinced me to do this video. So I hope uh, this has been helpful to you. I haven't found one uh, for the supply chain people out there. So hopefully this helps. And give me your comments. Uh, if you've got any other experiences of uh, what, what what right or what went wrong on interviews, uh, give me some feedback of what you think could be added to this. And uh, hopefully uh, it was a good experience for you. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'll see you down the lane.